So obviously everyone remembers 9-11 uh, for obvious reasons and where they were. Um, I also remember for another reason actually, I was 14 at the time. Uh, I got on the bus in the morning on the way to school. Uh, I go to the back of the bus and there I find sitting waiting for me a brand new phone. Uh, if you remember it was the, uh, I think it was called the Matrix phone. It was the first phone to have Snicks 2 on it. Um, at the time I think it was worth 700 or 600 pounds. Um, and I got on the back of the bus and there it was just sitting there, a brand new phone. It had the roller, it was a green, quite a thick phone and it had uh, the internet. Uh, so the day started off really well for me actually. I was really excited. I found this phone that was worth hundreds of pounds. Um, and so I took it to school and obviously showed all my friends. Um, what happened then was, uh, um, usually I would go straight home from school. Um, and so there was no way for me to have seen any TV footage or anything. But at this time I went with a friend of mine uh, to the local high street. And it was there when we got onto the high street that we saw um, on TVs, you know, on, in the stores of what was happening. And my first instinct was that maybe it was something in Israel, um, something to do with the Palestine-Israel uh, conflict. And then everyone started saying, oh, it was the Twin Towers, it's the Twin Towers. And at the age of 14, if, I, you know, if I'm honest, I didn't know what the Twin Towers were. Um, but they said, no, it's America. And the minute they said it was America, that's, I think, when the gravity uh, of the situation really hit me. Uh, so I went home, obviously, straight away. And uh, I just remember you know, the whole family being around the TV. I think it's the realization that things were going to change. Really. So being called, I mean, obviously being a Muslim, being an Arab, and also being called a Sam, uh, it, it's had an impact on me uh, on kind of different levels. Uh, first of all, I've been quite blessed and quite lucky in that I have never actually faced discrimination or discrimination to my face that, that really I could talk of. Uh, what it what it served to do though was really to put me um, firmly in a bracket firmly in the Muslim kind of Arab box. Uh, I mean, before 9-11, uh, people would never know what my name was from. They'd say, oh, that's quite an exotic name. These are the kind of phrases I used to get. But after 9-11, it was automatic. You know, I'd tell them my name was Osama, or they'd see my name, and they would know that I was Muslim, they would know that I was Arab. Um, and obviously, I'd always get uh, a raised eyebrow. Uh, but for, more in humor than in, 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 in anything else. My message, or my hope, really, would be that we as a community really start to move on um, from, uh, if you like, the, the consequences of 9-11. For 10 years now, we've uh, been in, in, uh, in a very defensive position, quite understandably, with the world spotlight really uh, putting, putting attention on us. Um, unfortunately, we've come uh, to define ourselves really according to the other. So we're, for the last 10 years, we've been saying we're not X, we're not terrorists, Islam is peaceful, Islam is not what you accuse it of being, we as a community are not who you suggest we are. And we've been really uh, trying to define ourselves uh, in light of, of the other, in light of what the media is saying, in light of what some uh, politicians and uh, analysts are saying. Uh, and so one would hope that after 10 years now, as we go in, uh, as we move forward, that we would now really start to define ourselves uh, according to our own terms and that we no longer define ourselves according to 9-11.